Hello and welcome to the second uh, section uh, in chapter 18 of Young and Friedman's University Physics. This chapter is on the thermal properties of matter or the heat kind of properties uh, of matter. The first section was on the ideal gas equation and then this section is on some of the molecular properties of matter. I feel like, you know, this is a physics textbook and I feel like these are whole chapters, you know, you know um, uh, uh, large topics in chemistry, um, but okay, it is what it is. Probably you've had a chemistry course in high school or maybe even in college if you're, if you're watching this video. So hopefully you can track along. I'll try to explain uh, backstories of, of some of this as we move along, but I, man, he's cramming a lot into these sections, or at least it feels that way uh, to me. So let's start by talking about molecules. What's a molecule? Well, molecules are basic building blocks of all the material that we see around us. Now, you might be saying, well, what about atoms? Well, atoms are the most fundamental building blocks of everything around us that is um, unique little things. Let me try to explain what I'm getting at there. It's very hard to explain, although I think we kind of catch on at some point. So you can go smaller than an atom. There are electrons, there are protons, there are neutrons, these kinds of things we learned in middle school, maybe even. Uh, but the thing is, electrons are the same no matter what electron they are. Protons are the same no matter what proton they are. Neutrons are the same no matter what neutron they are. Electrons, protons, and neutrons are all the same. They're not, they're not unique things in terms of, of, um, of, of say, elements. Atoms are unique things. There are a certain number, I think 90 some, almost 100 uh, naturally occurring atoms or elements in, in nature. Um, and so, by the way, uh, 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 what a sad day to find out that there is no such thing as vibranium uh, in the Avengers. I'm sorry, it's all made up. There is, we don't make elements, you know, <laughs> okay, anyway. So, um, so there's a certain finite number of atoms that make up everything. But those atoms combine together to form molecules. And who knows? I mean, nobody knows how many different possible molecules uh, there, there actually are. Uh, maybe, maybe vibranium is a molecule anyway. But so um, molecules are fundamental also. Um, from a physics perspective, perhaps molecules are more convenient to talk about with regard to heat. Uh, I suspect they are, that mole molecules are more convenient of a, of a level of substance to talk about when we're talking about heat and thermal properties of matter than atoms even, even are. Uh, but, but atoms come together to form molecules. Now, I might, now, my chemistry conscience is going off and saying that in chemistry, we actually make a distinction between molecules and, say, ionic compounds uh, but I'm not going to go there. I've, my conscience is clear because I've footnoted it, uh, but I'm just going to go on and say that atoms come together to form molecules. Uh, there are some small ones and there are some big ones. So atoms come together to form molecules like water, H2O. is two, uh, a central oxygen molecule with a hydrogen and a hydrogen uh, connect, connected to it. Um, now, some of these molecules are very small, maybe as small as 10 to the minus 10th meters in size. And you can have a molecule that's just one atom, like, like a neon. Uh, the noble gases, you know, in column eight um, are, are basically one atom wonders. They don't need their, I'm at peace, I don't need anybody else. You know, xenon, it's okay, it's by itself. Um, but um, then you have diatomic molecules like hydrogen uh, or oxygen or fluorine uh, occur as mo molecules of two of them uh, often. Um, the largest molecules can be on the size of 10 to the minus 6 meters in size, which is still too small for me to imagine, but is very big in comparison to the smallest uh, molecules like H2, um, uh, a hydrogen, diatomic hydrogen mo molecule. Well, okay, this probably is fairly familiar from some high school chemistry course you had once upon a time. Now, the problem is, is that... Uh, there are, you know, given how small molecules are, um, for us to talk about anything in, in our world, in our real world, you know, we're, we're talking about massive numbers of these things. And so there was a guy named Avogadro uh, in the 1800s who basically said 
that uh, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a quantity called the mole of something, a mole of something. And it's not, not the little, ah, I'm a mole, I'm going to dig in the ground. Not that kind of a mole, but it comes from a Latin word uh, for, for a certain kind of quantity. And so this quantity has been um, linked to the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Again, I feel like he's going over stuff that you, you spend a lot of time learning in chemistry. But let me, let me try to give a, 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 a what is carbon-12? Well, we know that the atomic number of an atom is how many protons are in its uh, nucleus. So the atomic number of carbon is six because carbon has six protons in its nucleus. So where does the carbon-12 come from? Well, there are some varieties of carbon. All, all varieties of carbon have six protons in their nucleus. But uh, there are some carbon atoms that have both six protons and six neutrons. By the way, a neutron when walks into a bar and orders a drink, uh, and then when he's delivered it, he says, how much does this cost? And the bartender says, uh, for you, no charge. Da -da 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 Sorry, anyway, so you, you, in, a, in, in some carbon atoms, you have six protons and six neutrons, making a total of 12 atomic mass units in the, the nucleus. And so we call that carbon-12 because it has 12 particles in its nucleus. Why would we do this? Well, because there, there are other what are called isotopes of carbon. Carbon-14 has 14 particles. It still has six protons because that's what makes it carbon. But carbon-14 has eight neutrons, um, which, by the way, makes it radioactive. Carbon-14 um, deteriorates um, uh, over time. Uh, because it, it, it have, it, it's, it's extra pro neutrons make it unstable. Uh, and that's, by the way, carbon-14 dating um, uh, looks to how, how much it's, what its half-life is, or how, I mean, how it's deteriorated um, to try to figure out how old the substance you're looking at uh, actually is. That's not important right now. But so basically 12 grams, carbon-12, and it turns out that this is six, uh, times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. So a mole of something, could be atoms, could be molecules, could have a, a mole of, of coffee cups. A mole of coffee cups would be six times 10 to the 23rd coffee cups. So this is Avogadro's number. It is a way of talking about large numbers of things uh, that's been benchmarked to uh, 12 grams of carbon-12. So one mole of something is six times 10 to the 23rd, I'm, I'm approximating here, of some elementary entity like an atom or a molecule. Okay, I skipped, uh, well, mo molar mass. So molar mass is the number of grams in a mole of something. That's the molar mass, capital M. The molar mass of something is the mass of one mole of that something. And so a typical unit would be the number of grams per mole uh, of, of something. So here's a nice little formula. The molar mass of something is Avogadro's number times the mass of an individual, whatever it is. So. If you take a molecule of carbon uh, mold, and uh, take the mass of a molecule of carbon, multiply it by um, um, a molecule of carbon something. Uh, anyway, um, uh, let's say a molecule, uh, sorry, the mass of an atom of carbon. Let's go there. And multiply it by Avogadro's number. That gives you the, the molar mass, which, by the way, is 12 grams per mole. Surprise. Um, so. Uh, it roughly corresponds to the number, uh, the molar mass roughly corresponds to uh, the number of particles in the uh, nucleus of, of, of an atom uh, or in all the atoms of, of a molecule. Uh, okay, so uh, there you have it, molar mass. Now, I kind of went out of order in this chapter, in, in, in this section, because I felt like it, uh, that what I've just done now is probably a little easier to understand. Um, now let's go into uh, intermolecular forces. Again, there's like a whole chapter in chemistry on this. The, the, the forces between molecules is primarily electrical in nature, the charges. And it's not as simple as, uh, you know, usually since molecules are collections of atoms, the charges that are attracting between them is not just some simple, uh, this is all positive and this is all negative. It's, it doesn't work that way. It's the, you've got a combination of factors. But, it, but the uh, attraction or repulsion 
um, uh, between molecules is primarily electrical. Gravitational forces are negligible in comparison. Now there's some ideal distance between molecules at which they kind of, they're, not, they're neither attracting each other nor repelling each other. Um, we call this R0 or R sub aught or R, R sub zero, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. There's some distance R, R0 at which the, the various electrical charges are neither pulling or pushing. Um, and that's called R sub aught or R sub zero. At a distance that's less than this, uh, then they're too close, too close. You know, I'm an introvert, stay away from me. You know, so uh, we say there's a positive force with, with regard to R if, if the distance between them is less. Um, so if you try to compress liquid or if you try to compress a solid, uh, the atoms don't want to do it because, you know, they're happy at the, the kind of the equilibrium distance they're at. And so a positive force is a force of repulsion when uh, two molecules are closer than their rest uh, distance, R sub aught. Um, now at a distance greater than this, there will be a kind of attractive force uh, between them, uh, which is understood as a negative number um, of F sub R. Um, if, so R zero is, ah, that's where you wanna be at R sub zero. So here's a chart from, from uh, uh, Young and Friedman. Uh, this, this little dip here is known as the potential well, where U is potential energy. And you can see that the potential energy uh, between two molecules is at its lowest point, its minimum, uh, at R sub aught, at R sub zero. Because this is where it's at peace. It doesn't either want to repel or attract, it's, it's happy. And, and so the low, there's no potential energy, right? There's no potential. If, if, you, if you increase the distance, so positive R, if you increase the distance beyond its rest distance, then it wants to come back together. The molecules want to come back together. By the way, an ideal gas is one in which there are no intermolecular forces at all. Um, it's ideal, of course, it doesn't exist. Um, but if you go then, if the distance gets less than um, R sub aught, uh, then uh, it wants, it's attractive. I mean, it's repulsive because the R is less than it wants to be and it wants to push apart. So the, the, the uh, red is the force, not from Star Wars, but basically um, when the distance is greater, you have an attractive force. Uh, and then when the distance is less than the rest uh, distance, they want to push apart and the force is positive. Positive meaning repulsive, the force is negative, meaning attractive. Now, uh, this potential energy curve is basically, um, the, the force is the, the negative of the der derivative of the potential energy. So the change in potential energy per distance, the negative of that is the, the repulsive, the, the F sub R. Um, so as we go back here, uh, you can see that when the, uh, when the potential energy is at a minimum, that is its slope is zero, the derivative of it is zero, you can see that this force curve is at zero, which makes perfect sense, right? When the slope of, of the potential energy is zero, that means the derivative of the potential energy is zero, and since force is the derivative, force is zero at that point. Makes perfect sense, right? Um, so the potential energy increases as the molecules separate beyond or below uh, this R sub aught, this R sub zero uh, point. Um, now, in order to get out of the well, get Timmy, 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 Timmy fell under the well. In order to get Timmy out of the well, you have to put at least as much kinetic energy uh, into uh, whatever it is you're talking about, the molecules you're talking about, uh, in order to um, get from here to, to zero and, and uh, got to get out of the well. Um, and then you, you, you know, like if you raise the temperature, then their vibrations increase and eventually they can pull apart and go from being a liquid, say, uh, into a gas um, and so forth. Okay, so um, last slide. Oh, that was the last slide. And so there you have it, a little bit on the molecular properties of matter, Young and Friedman's second section in chapter 18, um, the thermal properties of matter.